This video is about cancelling. Cancelling is something we do when we're multiplying fractions that can make it easier to get to the answer. Here we have a question, 15 sixteenths times 8 twenty-fifths. And we can solve this by multiplying the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom in the way we usually do when we multiply fractions. The numbers are rather large and that can make it a little confusing and a little easier to make mistakes. But if we're careful, we'll get the right answer. 15 times 8 is equal to 120. And 16 times 25 is equal to 400. We have an answer, but this answer can be reduced. So we will reduce it now. 120 and 400 have a common factor of 40. So if I divide both top and bottom, by 40, I get 3 over 10. 3 tenths is the answer to this multiplication. But is there another way to do it? And can I find an easier way to do it? We could try reducing the original fractions. If they could be reduced, we'd have smaller numbers and it would be easier to get to the right answer. But 15 over 16 cannot be reduced. 15 and 16 do not have any common factors. And 8 over 25 also cannot be reduced. 8 and 25 do not have any common factors. But what if I am able to reduce a fraction with 15 on the top and 25 on the bottom? Can I do it that way? Well, with multiplication of fractions only, we can. What would we do if we had 15 25ths? We could see that these have a common factor of 5. We could divide both top and bottom by 5. And we get 3 fifths. That is the reduced version of 15 25ths brought to lowest terms. And we can do the same thing with 8 over 16. If we have 8 over 16, they have a common factor of 8. We can divide both top and bottom by 8, and we get 1 half. This is the trick we're using. We're allowed to use any numerator with any denominator when we're multiplying fractions. If this is a multiplication symbol, we can reduce the 15 and the 25 by what we call cancelling. And this is what it should look like. We can see that 15 and 25 have a common factor of 5, so I cancel the 15. 15 divided by 5 is 3. I write a little 3 here. And I cancel the 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5. I can write a little 5 here. I have to put a line through my original number, because if I don't, there are too many numbers left and it's confusing. I can see by looking at this that I'm using a 3 and a 5, and the 15 and the 25 just aren't there anymore. I can do the same thing with the 16 and the 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2 and 8 divided by 8 is 1. Now I multiply, like I'm used to, but I use the little numbers that I wrote in, my new numerators and denominators. 3 times 1 is equal to 3, and 2 times 5 is equal to 10. I have 3 tenths. It's the right answer. It's the same answer I got when I did it the other way. The good thing about cancelling is that if you can do it successfully, you end up with an answer that is already reduced to lowest terms. If you multiply without cancelling, you have this extra step of reducing the fraction before you have given your final answer. This is how cancelling works. 